Hello, hello there, and welcome back to Wolfen aboard your favorite US premium destroyer, the USS Moffat. The reason why I want to talk about the ship today is because this is maybe your last chance to get the ship that dirty cheap as it currently gets sold. And I know this is video number 3769 on this ship, but it's just so damn good and it's just so damn profitable. So Gaijin in their infinite wisdom have realized, hold on, there are many bots sailing around on War Thunder. But in the first place, to make this happen, they need to purchase this ship. So in order to give the bots a full lineup, Gaijin have added a new premium destroyer, the USS Frank Knox. And that will be the sixth premium ship at rank three in the US Blue Water Fleet alone. Just think about this. And the reason why I mentioned this ship, and by the way, you will find the link to the dev block in the video description down below, is because this has Gaijin apparently allowed to raise the price of the Moffat. Because previously, this is together with a lot of other ships, the highest civil line income producer. So let's check this out. Due to the addition of the new premium rank 3 destroyer, the economic characteristics of the premium USS Moffat are changing. The cost of this ship is increased from 1300 to 1750 golden eagles. The research point multiplier is increased from 272 to 308%. The changes will take effect with the release of the Fire and Ice update. Now that is highly interesting. And to be honest, I think that is a first. Uh, can anybody else name me, please, another premium where the price has risen while it was sold? You know, the only other company that I can just think of at the top of my head is Lego, you know? And that has already absurd prices. Now, to be honest, for what the USS Moffat does, for how cheap it is to run, with repair costs of less than a thousand silver lines, and with just that performance, with the extreme silver line multiplier, you know, the, the ship was always a really, really profitable and dirty cheap premium. One of the best deals, if not outright the best deal, when it comes to premiums intended for silver line making in the game. Uh, I just wondered how long Gaijin will, you know, tolerate this. But I thought, to be honest, that Gaijin would lower the silver line income rather than increase the RP gain because to be honest even then penalty grinding is just an option for the rest of the US tech tree and while the Helena is really great you know it's all about the Moffat it just gets significantly more kills per match it just has the better matchmaking it can kill also cruisers and who knows how long the HE bug still will be a thing in the game for the USS Helena to work over those battleships. Time will tell. But as it stands right now, the most reliable one, I think, to be honest, should be the USS Moffat. So should, uh, should you get the Moffat right now, before the update drops and it will be more expensive? Well, to be honest, I haven't really tried this ship out on the dev server and it might be possible that this week the update is dropping or next week and I have not uh, watched out for any sort of civil line uh, or RP changes or any performance or damage model changes or game mechanics in, in that aspect. So I can't tell you what else is changing that Gaijin doesn't tell us. But as it stands right now, the USS Moffat is really profitable, it's really powerful, and it has uh, great tools for every situation. The torpedoes might not be the strongest, but you have eight. And then on top of this, quite literally, you can drop some depth charges. There they go, landing directly between the turrets and boom. <laughs> well, that doesn't happen all that often, to be honest. And uh, yeah, that was me just sinking a Helena. It might have been a bot Helena, but nonetheless, I got him. The ship is powerful, but strangely enough, its strangest weak, uh, its strongest weakness, if you will, 
is the AA, because the guns are in a mounting that cannot elevate as high as for example on the Kowal that can nearly shoot straight up to bring those proximity fuses to work and you don't have 40mm bofos to back it up. But at the end of the day, in most situations, it just is all about the gunfire power and the armor, the ludicrously effective um, shrapnel protection armor, anti-fragmentation armor it's called. And uh, you have really great ammunition types, powerful HE shells with also proximity fuses, two different sap shells or a normal HE, you have it all. And it's just suited for the majority of situations. Shell by shell, yeah, maybe the Germans and especially the Russians might have in that caliber region more powerful shells, but the sheer DPM, the sheer volume of fire from eight five inch guns with a reload of 2.8 seconds, that is just what makes the ship work. That is just what sets it apart from the competition. And if you play it right, you can do stupid things with it. Uh, to be honest, it's so productive that this is my to-go ship for making civil lines. And, you know, I just have roughly 275 million at the moment, which is quite a bit and I'm settled for the upcoming sales. I have made up to 1.3 million civil lines in a game with a 300% booster and the anti mech order activated just at the right time, just getting the right amount of kills. And here is another thing. I know that a lot of people let bot programs run. One more statement about this. No, do not get the bot programs. They are not worth it. Just play a couple of games yourself, learn how to aim, learn how to shoot, learn how to prioritize where to aim on an enemy ship with which ammunition type to bring them down quickly and efficiently and you will make lots and lots of civil lines. The bot programs are boring. The bot programs are against the end user license agreement, the EULA, and this can get your account banned. And just don't risk all your event vehicles, your progress, the grind so far, and that just for a cheap extra few thousand civil lines. Honestly, it's not worth it. Yes, I made a video where I stated that, that I understand the reasons for this, that I also mentioned, but that doesn't mean you should do it yourself, okay? So I have made a series regarding the premium cruisers. If you want to check them out for the sales, I have made also the video about the bots, how to spot them, how to report them, and also the Chinese perspective, because apparently the majority of people using the spot programs are coming from China for understandable reasons, although I don't agree with it and I never would do this myself. I hope this is a clear statement. And so it's all the more important to know, basically, in a nutshell, how to moff it and how not to moff it. So how to take a moff it down really quickly? Well, you just simply aim for the rear turrets just below them with sap or AP and ignite the ammo rack and that mostly will outright detonate the ship or at least heavily, heavily um, damage them. And when you see a different Moffat that then aims for that section, go bow in, load AG, take its turret out, the enemy's ship's turret of course, and then uh, try to do the same to them. And so you can do the Moffat dance, right? And um, the torpedoes are not the strongest, but at least you have eight of them. Your AA might be surprisingly enough your weakness and you also have to watch out for those patrol boats because if they are too close then your 5 inch 38s just can't aim properly like that's a bug uh, of the aiming system and overall the ship is fantastic. So should you recommend it? Well here is the deal breaker. I know that a lot of you might not enjoy naval forces but here is a tip, a little trick that I use constantly to make naval forces fun and that is that if I see that I am on a bad map in a full up tier like before you spawn you can check the leaderboards if there are any cruisers on your team and if so then just spawn the reserve patrol boat three times 
and you are back in the hangar without a crew lock and you can go into the next match and so you can avoid those waste of time maps you can avoid those waste of time up tiers and you know it doesn't really matter at the moment because on both your and the enemy team there is nothing but bots so is the uss moffat worth it in a nutshell i can recommend it for making silver lines if you like naval forces that is if not then this ship might not really change it if you want to see the good side of naval forces this is it if you are only looking at the bad things just don't touch it and that's it for me today so i'm really interested in reading your comments about this let me know what you think about this and as usual why not give this video a like with it subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other on the battlefields in the skies and on the waves of War Thunder.